Plot Summary of Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh During World War II, Charles Ryder is a commander in the British Army in 1943. His company hasn't been sent abroad yet, so they're waiting in England to hear where they'll be going. They haven't done much fighting and have spent most of their time in army camps in the English countryside. These camps are set up in empty country homes. When Charles hears that the company has to move again to another place in England, he is tired of war and has lost hope. Charles knows the house when they get there. He has been to Brideshead many times, and it is a beautiful country house. It is now an army barracks, and a lot of its original decor has been destroyed. As Charles walks around the land, he can't help but think about things from his past. Charles goes to Brideshead for the first time when he is in his first year at Oxford University. There, he meets Sebastian Flight, who is the son of Lord Marchmain, the wealthy English lord who owns Brideshead. The Marchmains are Catholic, and Lady Marchmain, Sebastian's mother, is known to be very religious. Charles meets Sebastian when Sebastian gets drunk and pukes in Charles's room one night. The next day, Sebastian invites Charles to lunch to say sorry, and the two become close friends and fall in love. At this lunch, Charles also meets Anthony Blanche, a friend of Sebastian's who is well known on campus for his odd behavior and theatrical personality. Soon after that, Sebastian brings Charles to Brideshead for the first time to meet his nanny, Nanny Hawkins, who still lives in the house and is like Sebastian's mother. Charles thinks the house is beautiful and is interested in Sebastian's family. Nanny tells them that Sebastian's sister Julia is coming over for tea, but Sebastian says he and Charles have to go, so they hurry off before Julia gets there. On the way home, Charles asks Sebastian if he is ashamed of him. Sebastian says he does not want Charles to meet his family because they are always taking things away from him and will make Charles their friend instead of his. At college, Charles and Sebastian still have fun and get drunk together. One night, Anthony takes Charles out to dinner and tries to turn him against Sebastian. He says that Sebastian's family is strange and sinister, and that Charles should stay away from them. He tells Charles that Lord Marchmain left Lady Marchmain during World War I, and that Lord Marchmain now lives abroad with his mistress. Lady Marchmain will not leave her husband because she is a very strict Catholic. Charles is confused, but he doesn't care what Anthony says. During the summer break, Charles and Sebastian go their separate ways. Charles goes home to stay with his father, who is clearly not happy to have him there. One day, he gets a letter telling him that Sebastian was hurt gravely in an accident. Charles runs to the station and gets a train to Brideshead. When he meets Julia, he is amazed by how much she looks like Sebastian. Julia tells Charles that Sebastian only broke a bone in his foot, but he can't go anywhere and wants Charles to stay with him all summer. Charles is happy and agrees right away to stay. The next day, Julia leaves, and the boys have a wonderful summer together. Sebastian tells Charles that he should go to Venice to see his father. Charles really likes Kara, who lives with Lord Marchmain and his mistress. One afternoon, Kara tells Charles that Sebastian is a lot like his father, and if someone doesn't stop him, Sebastian will become an alcoholic. Charles does not believe her, but her words unnerve him. When Charles and Sebastian go back to Oxford, Charles sees that Sebastian is sad. His mother has asked a Catholic professor named Mr. Samgrass to watch over Sebastian. She hired Mr. Samgrass to write a book about her brother Ned, who died in World War I. Charles sees that Sebastian is drinking more and more. One night, Sebastian is caught driving drunk while he and Boy Mulcaster are out with a friend. This makes a big deal in the news. He doesn't get kicked out of Oxford, but Charles and Sebastian are given a strict bedtime. During the next term, Mr. Samgrass keeps a close eye on them, and Sebastian seems very upset. Charles is invited to Brideshead for Easter the following year, and Sebastian drinks a lot while they are there. Sebastian gets really drunk in front of his family one night. Charles tries to put him to bed, but Sebastian starts to cry and says that Charles is spying on him for his mother. The next morning, Sebastian feels very bad about himself, 
so he asks Charles if they can leave and go stay with Charles's father in London. Charles says yes, and Sebastian goes ahead. Charles stays behind to explain to Lady Marchmain. Lady Marchmain is worried about Sebastian's drinking, and she says that her husband has done similar things in the past. She gives Charles a copy of the book that Mr. Samgrass wrote, and Charles figures out that Lady Marchmain wants him to spy on Sebastian. Charles won't do this, and he tells Sebastian that they are the only ones who can save them. Sebastian's next term at Oxford is not better. He and Charles want to rent a flat together, but Sebastian doesn't think Lady Marchmain will let them. One day, Lady Marchmain comes to visit in the afternoon. That night, Sebastian gets very drunk and is found passed out on the university lawn. This makes Lady Marchmain take Sebastian away from Oxford and send him to another country. Charles doesn't want to stay at Oxford without Sebastian. He leaves instead to go to art school in Paris. He will see Sebastian again at Christmas at Brideshead. Sebastian has been drinking a lot for a while, and Mr. Samgrass is with him. Lady Marchmain paid Mr. Samgrass to take Sebastian on a tour of Europe's history. Mr. Samgrass shows them a slideshow of pictures from the trip. In some of the pictures, Charles can see Anthony Blanche. Charles doesn't like Mr. Samgrass, and he thinks he's hiding something. Charles finds out later that Sebastian ran away from Mr. Samgrass and went to live with Anthony, who they happened to meet on their trip. This is not something Mr. Samgrass has told Lady Marchmain. Even though Sebastian's family tries to keep him from getting drunk over the holiday, he still does. He goes fox hunting with his family one day, but in the middle of the hunt, he runs away to a village pub and gets drunk on money that Charles has given him. Lady Marchmain is furious, and Charles leaves Brideshead that day thinking he will never go back. Not long after this, Charles hears that Lady Marchmain is dying and would like to see him. He goes to Brideshead, and that's where he meets Julia. Lady Marchmain is very sick, so Julia asks Charles to try to find Sebastian, who is still in another country. Charles goes to Morocco because he knows that Sebastian lives there. Charles finds out that Sebastian is living with a German man named Kurt, that Sebastian is still an alcoholic, and that Sebastian is in the hospital with a lung disease. Charles tries to get Sebastian to go back to England once he is better, but Sebastian says that Kurt needs him and that he wants to stay in Morocco. While Charles is away, Lady Marchmain dies. Charles leaves, feeling down, and goes back to Paris by himself. Ten years later, Charles is a successful architect painter who is married to a woman named Celia. Even though his work is well known, it doesn't inspire him. He plans a trip to the jungle in South America in the hopes that it will. After a few months, he goes back to New York, where he meets his wife. Their relationship is awkward, and Charles still doesn't forgive Celia for cheating on him once. They take a boat to get back to England, where Charles meets Julia. Julia is unhappy with her marriage to Rex, a businessman. In order to marry him, she gave up her Catholic faith. Charles is attracted to her right away, and they talk for a long time. Not long into the trip, there is a terrible storm, and Celia starts to feel sick. It has no effect on Charles and Julia. They spend all week together and then start an affair. After two years, Charles and Julia decide to end their marriage to Celia and Rex and marry each other. Julia thinks that there will be a war in Europe soon, so she wants to get married before this happens. Charles agrees, and things start to happen. Brideshead, Julia's older brother, says that he is also going to marry a woman named Beryl Muspratt. He tells Julia that he can't introduce her to his fiancé as long as she's still married to Rex and dating Charles. Julia gets very upset, and Charles starts to think that she might be sorry she left the Catholic Church. Not long after this, Lord Marchmain tells his family that he will go back to Brideshead. He shows up with Kara, and it's clear right away that he's very sick and will die soon. As Lord Marchmain's death gets closer, Brideshead and his younger sister Cordelia, who are both very religious, start to put pressure on Julia and Charles to let a priest be there when Lord Marchmain dies. 
Lord Marchmain has stopped being a Catholic and hates the church very much. Charles is completely against it, but Julia doesn't seem sure. As Lord Marchmain's death approaches, Julia calls for Father McKay, a priest, and Lord Marchmain gives up his sins and gets a final blessing. At first, Charles is shocked, but soon he realizes that this was always going to happen. After this, Julia breaks up with Charles because she says she has to go back to the Catholic Church and can't get a divorce or remarry. Charles breaks up with her and hates her. In 1939, World War II starts, and Charles joins the army. As he walks around Bride's Head, which is now a military base, he is upset about the damage the soldiers have done. But after he goes to the chapel, which is now open and being used by the soldiers, he starts to think that maybe all the changes in chaos caused by the war are for a reason. It seems likely that Charles became a Catholic after what happened in the chapel. Charles starts to realize that he has no control over how things change over time. This makes him feel better and gives him hope for the future. About the author Evelyn Waugh was born in London in 1903 to wealthy parents. In 1907, Waugh's family moved to the nearby countryside, and Waugh had a wonderful childhood there. Waugh was a smart and creative kid who started writing short stories and plays when he was very young. He got a scholarship to go to Oxford University, but he didn't study much while he was there. Instead, he became known for drinking too much and taking a sarcastic, unorthodox view of politics and culture. During this time, he had several relationships with gay men. Waugh did not finish his degree at Oxford. Instead, he went to art school, but he did not finish that either. In 1927, his first book came out. It was about the life of the painter Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Soon after this, his satirical comedy, Decline and Fall, was also published. Waugh got married to Evelyn Gardner at the end of this year, but they broke up two years later. Waugh became known as a writer and worked for a number of well-known newspapers and magazines. He became a war correspondent and wrote about things happening in Africa and South America. During this time, he traveled a lot. Waugh became a Catholic and got married to Laura Herbert in 1930. They had seven kids together. Waugh was in the military during World War II, but he wasn't disciplined and wasn't cut out for the job. In 1944, he hurt himself while parachuting. While he was getting better, he wrote Bride's Head Revisited. This book was a huge hit, and it made Waugh famous. After Bride's Head, Waugh wrote a series of Catholic-themed books, but they did not do as well as Bride's Head. In 1953, Waugh had a nervous breakdown. He got better, but his health was bad after that. In 1966, he died of a heart attack. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.